Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews and on-site training. In this episode, I want to talk about CPP Coro, which is a library that makes coroutines easier to use in C++. Now, as you may be aware, coroutines were added in C20. And interestingly, by some definition of interestingly, we got absolutely no library support for actually using coroutines in C20. Now, in C23, we get exactly one helper for coroutines and that is standard generator and this is a tool that yields a sequence of elements by repeatedly resuming the coroutine from which it was returned so it is a very simple synchronous generator helper for working with coroutines so back several years ago, Lewis Baker and others created this CPP Coro library for making it easier to work with coroutines. But the library went largely unmaintained for several years. And many people had created forks and maintained the library, but the particular fork that I was made aware of was this one from Andreas Burr, which has done a seemingly spectacular job of making sure that the library has automated test. As you can see here, it is currently tested with G++ 10, 11, and 12, and 13, as well as Clang's 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and Visual Studio's 2017, 19, and 22. So, this library appears to make the most use of coroutines that we can hope for in C++. And this is a relatively large set of helper tools, and I am not even going to pretend to understand all of them, but we have task, shared task, generator, recursive generator, and async generator, plus a handful of helpers as well as the ability to do things like spin up thread pools and have your coroutines automatically run on thread pools. Now, like I said, I'm not going to cover all of those things. The main point of this episode is just to make you aware of the fact that CPP Coro exists, it is still in use, it is tested, and it is available for you to use. And, and one of the things that Andreas did in creating his fork was moved to CMake. So, you know, CMake, love it or hate it, but hopefully that means that we can easily use package managers with this CPP coroutines fork. But of course, your mileage may vary depending on your compiler, platform, and package manager in use. However, we don't really have to worry about all that because fortunately, we can see that CPP Coro trunk from Andreas Burr's fork is in fact supported on Compiler Explorer. So we should have a relatively easy time of playing with this. Let's go ahead and grab one of their canned examples from the CPP Coro website. And there we go with just a little bit of tweaking, including the missing header files and adding a little main to call our Fibonacci function. We can see that we have a generator. And this gives you just the simplest, most straightforward taste of what it would be like to use STD generator when our compilers finally support it. And that's worth noting as well. As you can see here, there are not currently any C++ compilers that support standard generator from C++23. Now, I just want to say I have absolutely no affiliation with the people involved with Dark Reader here, but I 
fairly regularly get YouTube comments saying that I need to be consistent about light mode versus dark mode and that kind of thing. And I appreciate changing the brightness quickly and unexpectedly in a video is annoying. So I am using this new dark reader plugin and it seems to be working and that it has made my CBP reference dark as we saw here. All right, let's take a closer look at this. And I, I just want to point out a couple of things that kind of personally annoy me a little bit about coroutines from C20. Uh, the first is that they don't have const expert support. And the first time I brought this up at a conference, I actually had the presenter kind of laugh at me, saying, Why would I want to use coroutines in a const expert context? Now, if you tell me that a coroutine is the best way to understand and solve a particular problem, then I probably want to use that same technique at compile time that I might also want to use at runtime. So I always thought that was odd. Coroutines, by definition, do a heap allocation. And there's no way to control that, but the compiler can optimize it away. Now, we've got GCC trunk. And we also have Cout in here, and Cout adds more compiler overhead than it should. So let's just make a quick change to format. Now, this might seem a little silly and convoluted, but the point is to reduce the amount of code that we're looking at in the compile version. Okay, so there's still an awful lot going on here, and we're not going to attempt to read through every single line of compiler output that's generated, but we're going to, just out of curiosity, try the exact same code in Clang and see if we get similar sized binary output. So I'm going to hit Clone Compiler. And I'm going to do a switch to Clang Trunk. I'm going to hit this output button so that I can verify that I'm getting the same output from Clang that I am from GCC. I am. The library clearly works in both places here. And we can see that they generate approximately the same volume of code at 03. Now, the third thing I'd like to make a quick comment about is this heap allocation. We cannot specifically dictate how this heap allocation that the coroutines use is actually performed. All right, so that is at its simplest generator. And if you weren't actually looking at this, first of all, this code needs to be cleaned up a little bit. It is creating A as 0, B as 1, and then it's doing this uh, topsy turny swapsy deal, which uh, there's definitely a better way to do this. Um, it goes like this. So uh, we basically do like a, a kind of a shift of the values left. So A becomes what B was, and B becomes what A plus B would have been. And we get the same exact output again. So always use exchange when you're trying to make your Fibonacci generator. It is a much cleaner way of doing that. Okay, um, generator. That's generator. Let's see if there's something else that we can play with or at least familiarize ourselves with from CVP Coro. I think async generator is worth at least noting. Um, it says it represents a coroutine type that produces a sequence of values of type T where values are produced lazily and values may be produced asynchronously. The coroutine body is able to use both co-await and co-yield expressions. Consumers of the generator can use four co-await range-based for loops to consume the values. So co-await is when you're waiting for a coroutine to return a value, and co-yield is when you are yielding that value from a coroutine. And here we're seeing that we are yielding, but we are not awaiting. We are just doing a ranged for loop here, and we're 
basically just simply using this function, which is a generator as like a continuation. It's similar to a generator in Python. We're saying yield the value and then control returns here on line 18 when we call this Fibonacci generator again. Okay, so at this point, I think it makes sense to just give a high level overview of the different types of things that you might do here. And like I said at the start of this episode, I'm not gonna pretend to fully understand all of this or to be able to fully explain it all. And my main goal is to make you aware of these things. So we have task, which is a asynchronous computation that is executed lazily then that the execution of the coroutine does not start until the task is awaited. So we have a task here, an example of it is count lines in a file. So it opens the file and it reads one line at a time. And you can see it's using coawait to read this. And interestingly, there is a read only file type here in CVP Coro as well, so that you can do asynchronous reading of files. So it just lazily loads this file and waits for some amount of data to be ready from the file. And then when it is done, it does a single co-return. This is not the same as the co-yield that we got from the generator. So count lines, one value. Generator, many values. Now back to async generator, this differs from generator and that it can produce the values asynchronously. Whereas with generator, it's a blocking wait for each value to be returned from the generator. Now, if you find this interesting, you will definitely want to go ahead and dive into this API documentation in that there is networking support, file IO support, and then some of these higher level things that you would possibly want to do like wait for all coroutines, all awaitable things to be ready at once, like a blocking kind of function. So as far as I know, this is the easiest, most straightforward way to get moving with coroutines in C++ 20. And if you have any interest in this at all, be sure to check it out. And by far, again, the easiest way to do that is to use Compiler Explorer. So I hope this was an interesting little aside into coroutines and the current state, both in the standard and in the open source library world. If you have a preferred coroutine library that you like, please be sure to leave a comment about that in this video. So thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe.